on YouTube. If you're on YouTube there, what you do is you go into the search bar, you, tap, you type in uh, Black Saturday by Anthony Echo, and you watch that there film. And you look at Tom Micah's pants in that film. They're nice gray pants. Um, and they're mine uh, because nobody owned a fucking suit in college, but I had a lot of suits, so I lent people my suit parts. And those are a good pair of pants, and uh, Tom Micah still has them. So while we're folding his laundry now, uh, we're just going to keep an eye out for uh, a pair of pants. A pair of nice gray dress pants. And if we find them, we get extra mad at him because they're supposed to be dry cleaned. Well, Jared. <coughs> Now that we've talked about your pants, what movie do you want to talk about? Today? I want to talk about Cretia. Welcome to In the Fold. <laughs> He's Joe. He's Jared. And we're talking about Cretia. Cretia stars Cretia Fairchild, who is going to a big family dinner and also trying to hide her addiction after being estranged from her family for an unknown amount of time. Throughout this, we meet various members of the family, as well as her son, who she hasn't spoken to in a while, played by the director, Trey Edward Schultz. And throughout the whole movie, we get this very chaotic dysfunction that arises as the movie goes on towards the climactic scene of them having dinner together. Yeah, it's a very atmospheric movie. It's a very intimate movie. It feels a lot in some ways to me like watching a play. It has a very small setting with lots of sort of family dynamics at play. Very short movie packed with a lot of tension. I think what it does uh, that is so wonderful is it kind of stays in one location the entire film, however, breaks up each scene very nicely into different areas, different rooms, and kind of bleeds a lot of conversation into one another. This movie has a lot of very long takes as well as a lot of steady cam shots um, that you know, kind of never break slow zooms that make everything very tense. I will confess to you and the world that I rolled my eyes throughout that first shot. Really? I didn't like it. Really? Uh, so she rolls up in the, we yeah. see the car and I fucking love that. I love seeing a piece of shit car in a movie because I'm like, oh, thank you. Like I know that person. I right. Um, but then like, very quickly, I was like, oh, no, I know why it's a shit car. Because then we pull back and we see, oh, she's parked in a nice neighborhood with nice right, cars. Right. And she's going to be going somewhere where people have their lives together. Okay. And she doesn't. And I was like, I get that. Oh, no. And she's talking to herself, which I hate in movies. So of I was course. Like, oh, God, strike two. And then, oh, she gets the wrong address. Poor thing. She steps in a puddle. How original. Like, and <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like, is this just going to be one of these movies that's doing these sort of... Of course obvious indie choices of course uh and then a uh, little bit into when she gets into the house i said no <laughs> it is not <laughs> right. uh, it goes way beyond that so uh if if there's anybody else rolling their eyes when they start this movie uh you're in for a ride you don't know who i am you don't know anything about what i'm here trying to do It feels like there's not enough room mm -hmm. at all times. Even though we're in a very big open floor plan of a house, there's still too many people. Mm -hmm. There's too much happening. Cretia Fairchild really is missing half her pointer finger. Like that's not yes. a, an effect. Like that's her pointer finger yes. that's gone. And why is it gone? I don't know. They don't tell you, but the important thing is it adds an extra level of anxiety. Oh. Like you, you, when she's digging it in like the food, right. you see she has to like put ointment on it. You know she has gauze around it and it's hot and she's sweating. And, and then it falls off. Like, you're thinking about it the whole fucking movie. Right. It's very authentic. Cretia is sweating in this movie, which is just not something you're accustomed to seeing in movies, unless you're like maybe establishing for a shot, like, oh, it's hot in here, and then, but then it's like, clean that shit up. Uh, of <laughs> that's Meryl Streep. Yeah, uh, right, right. But, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's sweating in this movie. She gets into that house, and it's like, I've been in this house. What this movie does is it, it visually jumps from many different perspectives very quickly, and also causes these very tense and anxious moments where it's almost as if you are going through a party and you're meeting everyone and going from one conversation to another mid-sentence and but you're you're in it and you have to you have to watch it you have to listen to it if you're somebody who likes going to parties and you know somebody who 
says that they don't like going to parties. Watch this film and you will know what it feels like to be somebody at a party who fucking hates going to parties. <laughs> that is exactly right. what it feels like. Right. The characters seemed very familiar and very, very real, right. which is something you hear about a lot of movies. You hear that about movies like Lady Bird, like lots of, but like until you like see it in a movie like this, right. a really small, really intimate movie, uh, it, it's filled with just like the sort of like bad comedy that happens right. in family gatherings. Right. Like there's stuff that uh, people say and do that if you were there in that family in the moment would be like hilarious, but like you're just cringing watching right. it from the outside. Of course. It's a really grotesque reflection of, I think, American uh, family dynamics. Of course, definitely. Almost all, if not all, of the actors in the movie are just family members. Yeah. They are just playing off of their possibly normal family dynamic. And I think the exception is uh, Doyle, the uncle. He's okay. like a, I, th I think he's like a fairly prominent sort of voice right. actor okay. or something, but again, okay. he's like a face you don't know. And I think it was probably important to get somebody professional in that role Definitely. because he's sort of a th through line. Well, I'll tell you what, you can write it down and I'll read it later. Okay. Shut up! It feels like this is something that can be happening behind any door in like right. any suburb. We were talking before we started filming, at one point the main character's right. mother comes Gigi, in yeah. and she is like senile or maybe has dementia or something and if that is a performance it is th the, one of the greatest performances right. I've ever seen. Right. Ever. Period. Period. The character with very little screen time, completely mesmerizing. <laughs> it's weird, I just watched this movie this morning. I watched this movie like Seven hours a ago. A few hours ago, right. <laughs> I pressed play. I still haven't had time to sort of process it. And when you you said something like about it being like low stakes, and I was like, is he out of his mind? <laughs> and, but then I thought about it, I was like, wait, no, this is a really small low stakes right. movie that happens in somebody's living room. The amount of tension, the, uh, the level of discomfort that you right. feel, it feels gigantic it feels right. like uh, you feel like this family cracks in half exactly. because of of what this woman does her goal is to make the turkey be back in the good graces of her family get back together with her son and she just somehow finds a way to mess all of that up whether it's being too forward in that you know wonderful very tense two shot conversation that just lasts and why can't you even look at me it's very awkward, but we're there and we're forced to watch it. Okay, I brought this up too soon. We can, we'll talk about it another time, right? My bad. Yeah, and, and you're right about how it's um, a sort of testament to uh, cinema because it is a very cinematic movie. Not in the way I think we usually use that word. A lot of times we use it as a sort of synonym for like epic, right. which this is far from. This movie it keeps you busy for the hour and a half through cinema and cinematic choices. It's right. not a dramatic movie. You couldn't mm. read this script. Right. It's not about obstacles. It's not about characters making different choices and facing challenges and overcoming right. obstacles. I mean, it is that. What makes this movie work is uh, what the camera captured, how it captured it, how it presented it to you through the editing. It changes aspect ratio twice. There's one sort of musical, it would be like almost like a musical interlude, like a ballet right. scene in like Oklahoma, uh, leading up right. to you yeah. know, preparing the turkey and getting the dinner ready. There's a sound design aspect to it. This atmospheric droning that's going on throughout the movie, like a racer head or something. It's not that over the top as it is an eraser head, but there's just constant like noise that's been put in. And then there's the natural ambiance of the house, which as you said is a real family house and it plays into that uh, overlapping. It's not a place that's been uh, padded and, and, and where they're reducing echo. It's, it's, you feel like you're there and it's a very authentic experience. Uh, watching this movie. It's when you have these uh, great iconic actors, they're beautiful people, you're in this beautiful house, you're in this beautiful setting, mm -hmm. uh, it's very tempting to frame that all beautifully. Right. And to present it beautifully even though it's sort of an ugly story about people who have done some ugly things and who right. feel ugly. This movie says, fuck the beautiful house, fuck the beautiful right. people, and it zeroes in on this person's feelings in this situation and it presents the ugliness of it and and that becomes in its own way beautiful as a culmination of right. these things and it's a way greater experience this isn't a movie that uh 
was adapting to being low budget. This is a movie that did everything that it had to do and right. it didn't need a lot of money and it didn't need right. big faces to do it. <clears throat> it might not have gotten those things because on paper, uh, this movie probably doesn't work as well. Right. It started off as a short film, right? Right. Yeah, that's the only way something like this is going to get funded. Of course. Only this filmmaker could have made this film. Right. And only this filmmaker could have made that housework in, the, right. in this way. Like this is somebody somebody who knows those people, who knows how to get these performances out of, of these course. non-actors, how to get them to be themselves in a way that can be captured. Like right. just think from a practical aspect of making the film. It's a very personal film, especially considering the fact that it's not necessarily about the person making Of it. course. Uh, but it's a piece of shit, don't see it. <laughs> What would you say this movie, who, who is this movie for? Uh, I think this movie is for, number one, most importantly, people who can, like, handle it. <laughs> if, if you're not somebody who, like, who can handle very, like, anxious, tense right. film, uh, maybe you shouldn't watch it, or maybe you should watch it in, like, bursts, even though I don't think that's the way to watch it. I would highly recommend this movie to people who are starting off making movies. I wouldn't say to watch it keep thinking that you should make this movie or make a movie like this, but you can make a movie with people you know in a place that you know, telling a story you know in a very interesting way that's both your own and takes influences from other places. I would recommend the movie to somebody who just sat and watched us talk about it and thought, uh, maybe I should watch yeah, it. Yeah, maybe I'll check this out. <laughs> I do definitely recommend it for newcoming filmmakers, people who have been doing this for a long time and anyone in between that. Movies don't always need to be on such a high scale. You can make compelling, interesting, uh, anxiety-ridden, tense stories with just your friends and family. I do think that it is a movie that shows that by restricting yourself to your family, to a smaller story, you can hone all those themes and elements of that little story into something much bigger and much more complex. And, and I hope that we're not making it sound like it's a, it's a movie movie for movie people. <laughs> Uh, right, like it, it uses what what it ultimately does. I think the reason we're so impressed with it is that it just creates this deeply, deeply human experience. Right. So even if you're not paying attention to these things, even if you're not the kind of person who is going to sit there thinking about the way the sound design contributes to the atmosphere or whatever, uh, it it's it just tells a really interesting human story about people who I think will be familiar to any viewer, uh, and I think it's a very, it'll be a very uh, interesting, almost unique experience for anybody who watches it. Tom's gonna get mad at us if we don't continue. I guess he will. The, the tyrannical Tom. Uh, like to have dinner with his family. Tom's a total creature. Hi, Mike here from Rabbit Hole TV, here with our mascot pumpkin. Thanks for watching In The Fold. If you like what you saw, please subscribe for more. And if you really like what you saw, you can check out our Patreon where you can see behind the scenes photos and videos. Right, pumpkin?